uh, being able to onboard your customers properly onto the tool so they can be more kind of self-sufficient uh, mm-hmm. and self-serve. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the High Level Spotlight Sessions, where we showcase awesome marketers doing awesome marketing. Today, I am joined by Esben Fries Jensen. He's the co-founder and chief growth, op- growth officer um, of UserFlow, which dubs itself as the fastest way to user onboarding. Esben, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm excited to talk to you. Um, You guys are fellow tool creators, and it's a very cool tool that you have created. So if you haven't seen UserFlow yet, it basically is a system where you can create your own customized sort of uh, onboarding modals that you're used to using when you sign up for SaaS. So I'm really excited to talk to Esben here about how you can use UserFlow to build onboarding modal flows for your own white labeled version of high level. Esben, give me some backstory though. What, what, how did this company come to be? Were you guys, what were you doing before that led to this? So I, uh, I previously founded another company called Cobalt, uh, which is a security company. Uh, so, but also a software as a service company, so SaaS. Uh, so very familiar with the kind of importance of uh, being able to onboard your customers properly onto the tool so they can be more kind of self-sufficient uh, mm-hmm. and self-serve. Um, so that's something we were always focused on in uh, Cobalt um, and, and increasingly so over the last uh, years. And it was the same for my co-founder. Uh, he, he was also a big believer in this, uh, the big trend. There's, there's a couple of trends right now around uh, something called product-led growth, which, ba- which basically means you allow the tool to kind of uh, ensure the growth for you and, and mm. ensure the onboarding and retention for you so you can spend more time on higher value uh, activities. Um, mm. So that that is kind of the motivation for why we created uh, UserFlow. And then we also did it in a way that would allow non-developers to actually build these kind of onboarding flows because typically this is something that would require a developer or something like that to build uh, uh, onboarding sure. inside your application. Um, but but uh, with UserFlow, you can do it without code. Which is very, very cool. So, I mean, I guess let's just hop into it. I mean, I think we should show people what it looks like so that we can make sure everybody understands what we're talking about here. Yeah. Um, but I think as soon as you see it, you're going to quickly say, oh, I got it. I'm used to those. Pretty much, you know, every yeah. SaaS has some version of it. But like you said, they typically build it themselves, which sucks up a lot of dev time. And it's like, is this really the best use of the devs time when they can be building something else? And now there's this tool that you can just build them your own or yourself. And uh, I'm pretty excited. I think a lot of you guys are going to like it too, especially when you start thinking about your version of high level and your SaaS mode and, and what you're planning, how you're planning to onboard people. So Esben, do you want to share your screen and, and give us an idea of uh, what we're talking about here? Yeah, let me do that. And uh, while I'm doing that, I, so the, the reason why I actually also got to touch in touch a bit with the high level here is because we already have some customers at UserFlow today that are using UserFlow on top of their high level to basically onboard users. So um, that that is uh, what inspired me to share this with more people. So let me just share my screen here. Um, so I think you should be seeing my screen now. Um, yep, we can see it. Um, perfect. So this is user flow. Um, and uh, before I, I, I show you uh, user flow and how you actually built the different things, I want to show you an example of things you can build with user flow. Um, and uh, I, I've, I've built something inside high level to show it there. I'm by no means a high level expert. So <laughs> maybe the onboarding awesome. doesn't make sense at all, uh, but, <laughs> but it's just to show how, how it can uh, look and feel inside uh, high level. Oh, um, very cool. So let me uh, just jump into that. Um, so for instance, let's say now I'm in high level, uh, one can introduce, uh, say hello to the user by showing something like this, uh, like a welcome uh, kind of modal, where you say, hi user, this is um, uh, welcome to, to this platform, this is how it works and, and so on. And then they can say like, sounds good. Uh, then a, another element we have are these kind of onboarding checklists. So you can set up a checklist with a number of different tasks you want the user to do. Um, and the user can minimize this and keep it uh, in the corner uh, if they like. 
um, so they don't have to like uh, do it if they don't want to. Um, and uh, if they then, for instance, uh, click one of these, it can, for instance, be used to start what we call a, a flow. Other might call it a product tool or a guide. Okay. Um, so let's say I want to create a contact. Uh, then you can start a guide like, guide like this. Go to contacts, click on uh, contacts, and then uh, click here to add a new contact. And then fill in required fields and, and click save. So I can do this button. Uh, and then save and congrats you created a contact and it checks off the item in the checklist that's cool so, that, so wait how did it know that it actually happened i've always been curious of this <laughs> yeah so uh, uh that i will uh, i will show inside user flow but you basically set a criteria for when do you want to mark this task completed in this case uh the criteria i set was basically that the flow uh, or guide that was related to creating a contact. Uh, when that is complete, I want to mark this checklist item complete. Uh, so that's how we did it uh, in this case. And it knows so, yeah. that you click that button. Is that how exactly. it works? The save yeah, button? Yeah, it, it, it knows that I completed that guide uh, once. Uh, so basically gotcha. like the guide that took me through all these steps, it knows that I completed that. Uh, gotcha, and that is gotcha. what marks it complete. So then you can have like step-by-step -step tasks that the user can do and of course finalize 100%. Um, so that's one, one thing. And the last thing I just want to show uh, you can do as well. Let me see if I have it. Maybe I don't have it visible, but I will show it uh, from within here then. Another thing you can add, um, we call these like launchers. Um, so you can basically add uh, like a button or it could also be an info icon or a beacon inside um, uh, your high level and then it, it will show up. So let's say you have some kind of event coming up or whatever and you want the user to click on that and, and go and look. Um, so then you can basically do like this. So let's see if this works. Um, just remove this. And now you can see here a button popped up here. If I click it, I get a like a tool tab and then I can learn more uh, about what this is. Uh, so Very that's also cool. stuff you can build with um, with Useflow. Uh, that's awesome. So yeah. Uh, so and let's talk about seen, some kind of options yeah. here. Like, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Let's go back to that screen. I, I saw a lot of stuff and I was like, ooh. Yeah. So let's. Um, so we of course, I mean, Useflow is fairly simple to set up, uh, but of course, it's not like. You know, it does require a bit of work, uh, but it is it is fairly easy to set up. Um, the way you do it, uh, so the way you, first of all, uh, to get it into high level, you need to uh, basically uh, insert a small piece of JavaScript code that, but that's a very small piece of code that we give to you and then you set it in. And that's that's super easy. You, you basically just do it via the, um, uh, let me see if I can go back here. Yeah, the two uh, the two arrow icon at the top right. Yeah, let me just that'll go back take here. you. Oh, there you go. No, I'll just go back here and then settings, uh, and then it's the agency settings, and then you can put in the the code here, um, that that basically makes it work. So this is a code we provide to you, so you don't have to think about that uh, too much. Um, uh, you should just insert this and then you will know it will work basically. Um, cool. Yeah. So, so that's the only kind of code bit that you need to do. Uh, and when that is done, you can build everything from within this uh, builder here. Um, so basically, uh, let's say you want to build a checklist. Um, you basically say, okay, uh, if um, I want to show this checklist on to all users who goes to this uh, to the main page, right? So lands on this page. Okay. And then you basically add, what are the different tasks you wanna add? Um, so let me just go over here. And then you say, uh, for instance, let's take that one we talked about, right? Like start, uh, when this task is clicked, start the flow, create a contact and mark it completed when, uh, when the flow create a contact is completed, right? And you do that for each of the tasks. And then you basically set up 
a flow that is, uh, or you, you've done that beforehand, right? You set up okay, a flow. Okay, so those are the little footprints or the flows, got it. Yeah, so you have a checklist that you use to kind of start your flows, right? Um, and then you have uh, flows uh, that you then build for each action you want the user to kind of learn about, right? Uh, and the way this works is basically you say, um, go to, uh, for instance, you say, okay, I want my step, it could be a speech bubble, tooltip, or modal. The most normal is like tooltips that you kind of highlight a certain element in, in high level, right? So you say, the text I want in this tooltip should be uh, go to contacts. And then I select the element where I basically want to show that, right? So it's like this. So you basically go and then you get to pick wherever you want to show this tooltip. And you, when you select it, it takes a, a small screenshot like this and uh, and basically then you can use that element. So now you can set it to, if I click this element, go to the next step, which is then another tooltip maybe uh, here, right? Um, shown on this element. And then I can add another tooltip on another element. Very and cool. Another tooltip on oh. another element. And then you basically- I'll be right it, up, right? but sorry, I'm just yeah. gonna visitor. <laughs> no worries. Um, so that's how it works. And you can also, besides from adding like tooltips and elements, you can also add buttons like this. So you can have like a, a next button instead of like making it depend on clicking a, a element. You can say, okay, I, I just want the next step to happen when I click next. And then, you know, you mm. go here. Um, so it's very much a drag and drop kind of interface. Yeah, uh, it's and then cool. when you when you have it ready, you just click publish and you can always preview it as we have a Chrome extension that you install where you can like preview it before you actually publish it into your high level uh, instance. Oh, that's um, nice. So yeah. I noticed on this screen that we're looking at, you've got um, like a, looks like a live chat circle at the bottom right and you've got your get started. So I wondered yeah. if you have like the high level chat widget already floating down there, will this yeah. happen or just float right next to it? Yeah, so you basically just set it up to do that. In general, the this widget is almost always in here, uh, a bit to left, but you can move it even further to the to the left if you have something there. Uh, so that's actually a good cue into um, the theme because, as you saw when I did the demo, I kind of built a theme that look made it look a bit like high level. But you might, mm -hmm. as a company, want to make it look a bit more like your own branding. Um, of course, yeah. So, so uh, what you can do is make a theme uh, for your brand, basically. Uh, and as part of that theme, uh, one of the things is also to uh, set where you want to put this checklist uh, launcher and you can move it uh, a bit to the right or left, depending on what you need. But basically everything can be managed from within here. So you can change whatever the color here to red, that didn't look so good, uh, but, uh, <laughs> and, and change the font, whatever you want to change, you can basically do with from this kind of cool. uh, theme editor. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's kind of on a high level, uh, uh, no pun intended, how it works. Uh, and, I mean, that's uh, amazing. And it looks really user-friendly um, and easy to set up. I saw that you had an API tag there. Yep. For developers, can you go crazy with this? Like, can I, you know, say, okay, when a, when this webhook fires, that's what should complete a flow. Yeah, you can you can do uh, so. Typically, what you would do, uh, I think you call them. You you can use the API for that. Yes, uh, you can also. Uh, we have integrations, but that's mostly about. Um, sending data out of user flow into analytics tools. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, what we recommend, uh, so I think you have in high level something called the variables, or I can't remember the right term, mm. but uh, you can basically pass those into user flow via that small piece of code. And then you can use those in your code uh, or in your, in your flow. So let's say mm. I only want to show the checklist to users who fulfill who are on a certain plan, for instance, especially with the, your new SAS mode, mm -hmm. maybe a variable will be the plan, right? Uh, I don't know if that's available yet, but that could be an example, or maybe it's uh, some kind of role they have. Um, so whatever variables that high level makes available to you, you can use in uh, to control your flows and user flow. You just have to make sure they're passed. And that's more 
that's where a developer is probably needed to help a bit with that and just insert it in the right place. But we can also help uh, from our end. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. And, I, and I'm not sure if we have exposed those yet or not for each plan, but we definitely plan to if it's not done already. And just yeah. to sort of flesh out what he just said, which is really cool, is imagine with your SaaS mode, if you have three different plans, you could launch a different flow depending on which plan they signed up for. Um, exactly. And that's really cool because now we're getting really specific of what people and, on a specific maybe, plan should be doing. Maybe in a checklist, there's a certain task you don't want to have for that plan, right? So you can also just do like this and say, okay, I just want to, I want to use the same checklist all, but I'm going to show this particular task just for them. Um, mm-hmm. So, so uh, yeah. Very cool. So, yeah. so Esben, yeah. you mentioned something special for the high level community. Yeah, so we, you we, do have, uh, we do have a special promo just for the high-level community. Um, we, we, so if you go to uh, um, pricing, uh, of course, it can sometimes, these kind of things can seem a bit expensive, but uh, it's all worth it in the end if you can uh, help onboard more customers more effectively, right? So you can focus mm-hmm. on high value. Um, we have uh, three different plans, Startup, Pro, and Enterprise. Uh, for all high-level customers, uh, we are giving 10% on these packages, um, both startup and pro. And uh, for those that are very small customers, uh, we do have a, a bootstrapper uh, package that is uh, $100 a month. Uh, but then you have to be below five employees and there are some other requirements. But uh, that's an even more affordable package for those who are kind of fall in that uh, segment. Um, cool. so, yeah. And it looks like you guys have a 14 day free trial too as well. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So you can try it out and, and with the Chrome extension, you actually don't even have to install the code to begin with. You can just um, use a ah, okay. Chrome extension to build and, and try it out. Um, yeah. Oh, very cool. Awesome. Well, if you guys are, are interested, it's userflow.com slash pricing. And if they did want to sign up, how do they, is there a promo code or just, something that they should put in? Yeah, just just ping us uh, that you are you're from the high level uh, uh, community, and we'll we'll check uh, if, if that's the truth or not. Then we'll uh, we'll apply to this cup. Awesome, that's great. Yeah. We appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for coming on to chat, Esben. Thank you. Uh, a pleasure being here. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We will see you in the next one.